What's going on, Bud Mashes? I'm Mr. Gamer. And I'm Kitty Duvall. And welcome to episode 45 of SBR Reports. Hashtag Ace in 2018 recap and more! Exclamation point. Yes, I had to put that in there because I need to make sure that what I'm saying to you, you can visualize with your face eyes. I'm still going to see the title card. What if they're looking at this in the car and it's just one of those things that just automatically playing? Maybe they won't. And you have to think about those things, Mr. Vall. Okay. <sighs> but the first thing that I want to do is actually bring back something that I did, uh, I want to say, for about maybe three weeks. And that was the indie game of the week. And this goes to Accessible Early, available on Kickstarter right now. It is a new 3D platformer collectathon. What? Basically, from what I've understood from the trailer, is that you are a character and you collect these things called character tokens uh and this is kind of a homage to the games way back in the day like uh, banjo kazooie and banjo tooie or uh, even uh, super mario where you would just go and collect things well this is sort of a well I, I could just just based off the kickstarter it is a jaded and cynical view of a modern uh, of a modern gaming industry that takes advantage of consumers that's the uh i guess you could say that's how this video game was inspired what i like is the fact that it breaks the fourth wall in so many words like one of the pictures that just made me uh, give me a sensible chuckle i will say is a picture of a fireplace with just a very badly uh badly made fireplace that just has caution hot on it and it just simply says, if you need further proof of the developer's inadequacies, just take a look at my fire place. And it's just amazing. I, I, I love games like this. It's really, really open-ended, just do whatever. And if you want to break the game, that's fine. It's, you're expected to in so many words. As I previously stated, these uh, collectible tokens can give you so many different things as removing collision from yourself or alter the gravity of your like just re so many ridiculous things i love little video games like that i'm not expecting a, a deep story just make fun of make fun of the quote-unquote player or the developer or the creator uh similar to that mind fuck game pony island we don't talk about that time ah uh. but we, we just don't talk about that that's why we stopped taking requests for now. Uh, yeah. But something that we might be getting is a Boondocks video game. Man, so the rumor mill has popped <laughs> out something fan mother <laughs> and fantastic. Wow, that got, that got you excited. I'm sorry. I love the Boondocks. Can I live? Uh, yes, you can. I'm I'm just like I mean, the thing is is that this is this is like the rumors to end all rumors. Okay, no. I, the, the, I'll show you something later that'll be the rumors to end all rumors, and it has to do with E3 presentations. Okay, yeah. See, that's just people hacking into stuff. This is an actual rumor. Oh, my goodness. Okay, E3 at this point, I believe everything because people hack everything. All right. Oh, okay. Tell me I'm wrong. What I will tell you, though, is oh. that the possibility... Okay, so... Of a Boondocks mobile game, because that's what I had peeped in the uh, little video thing. So, with it being a mobile game, as long as it's not an open-world crafting survival horror game, we'll be fine. I don't want another Battle Royale game. Boondocks does not need to do that. Honestly, I really feel like it's going to be like those Family Guy and The Simpsons tapping games. So might have some crafting stuff. It won't be like so. The Sims. It, that's what they do with most of these souls things. Unless you're going to be running from the popo, and you know, because the Boondocks is very political. Well, yes, and what I feel is if it might be is similar to uh, do 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 circus. You know what? I need it to be a Scott Pilgrim. Okay, I can definitely see that. I, Scott, I, I, I see, I see that sort of like arcade beat 'em up. Choose your character. 
sort of sort of thing. Legit, that actually be really fun, especially with all the fight scenes and stuff that be happening in Boondocks. That'd be right? hilarious. That's what I see for this game. I don't see. Okay, I I, I feel mm-hmm. as if it would be a huge stretch for them to go from. As you mentioned, a very strongly political cartoon to essentially what what is it? Um, The Simpsons tapped out, or you know, yeah. some, like something like that. Like that would be. I mean, I guess if you just wanted to slap Boondocks on it and then just you know collect the cash, I suppose, uh, but it won't make it any good. Yeah, capitalism, man. And I'm pretty sure that's something that they can hit on. And unfortunately, capitalism is also the reason why some things die. Like... My hopes and dreams? Actually, I was talking about Best Buy Gamers Club Unlocked. Oh, okay. We'll talk about your hopes and dreams later. So, (laughs) for those of you who didn't know, the Best Buy Gamers Club Unlocked was an amazing program where essentially you paid uh, up to $30 a year and you would get 10% off... Um, ten percent off all new releases. You'll get twenty percent more trading credit, etc. Basically, you know how some people say Target is a place where you spend a little bit more money so that you don't have to go to Walmart. Well, it can be argued that Best Buy is where you spend a little bit more money the way you don't have to go to GameStop. And unfortunately, yeah, like you. And unfortunately, <laughs> now that the Gamers Club unlocked will. Be no will no longer be accepting new clients. Unfortunately, now you're stuck with GameStop. It really seems as if the comp well in the article uh, the art- in the article from Game a Spot, um, they talked about how it they just weren't making a whole lot of money. But the consumers they were eating this thing up because why wouldn't they? It's- I mean, it's the same reason people eat up the whole trading thing with a uh, GameStop. And why they sometimes end up not making a lot of money themselves. Like, do you, like, and for those, you know, for those longtime listeners, uh, you'll remember that we once covered um, GameStop's Power Pass. Yeah. Where essentially you would pay so much a month and then you could just rent as many used games as you wanted. Quote, unquote, that's what he did. Yeah. Quote, like, but that... They they since realized that maybe that wouldn't make them a whole lot of money and that wouldn't make them nothing. N- well, if you look at it within the business perspective of like Costco, where their Costco is considered, forgive me if we're going to be getting to some boring business talk. Costco is a loss leader. Where like you've seen the Costco pizza, that big pizza, and it's like five bucks. Obviously, they're not making a whole lot of money on that, but they make money off the membership. And I really feel as if that's what GameStop wanted to do and also what Best Buy wanted to do. And even Amazon Prime, because way back in the day, Amazon had something like this. Will you get 20% off? 20% off on Amazon? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, but Amazon got a bigger fish to th- do. Cause... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think they're going to be big in the in, in, in gaming, unfortunately. And don't never say never. I said I don't think. I didn't say never. I said I don't think. I... Because, you know, excuse me, it took me a while, it took me a while to get my Nino Kunai guide. I'm just saying. It's okay. Thank you. Not all of us use guides, so I don't understand your pain. Thanks. You're welcome. But anyway, going on to our main topic. Oh, this is this going to be us like, you know, talking about an event you may or may not have been to. So hi, new listeners that we may or may not have met at the con at Anime Central 2018. I am so happy to have met you. I don't know if you know, I was the only, I think I can say the only wedding browser. I think you were the only wedding Bowser. Yeah, I was not the only Bowser, but I was only the, the, the I was the only wedding Bowser, and I have to say, there are moments where a convention seems as if it is boring, lackluster. You've seen it all, especially me. I've been doing this for a few years now. Ace in twenty eighteen switched things up a bit in a really good way. And I would say, first of all, with its turnout, which was 
huge. Huge. I am... I I am... Uh, aside from the fact that I had an amazing cosplay made by Perito Productions, to be able to interact with people who I've seen before at the convention. We, uh, Miss Duvall and I had run into the developers of Text Quest and Stacks on Stacks on Stacks um, mm-hmm. at, at the convention. That was nice. Um, uh, children chased you. Oh, that, that that was an amazing thing. Ch- you know? Children were literally, Mommy, look, it's Bowser's! I had... I, there was Mom, look! There, there was a child. I, I think it was... Saturday. Saturday. It was Saturday because Saturday's the only time you were in your cosplay. What I was going to say is Saturday take two. Ah. Um, and I had a little kid and he came up to me, just tugged on my pants, and I was like, Yes. Um and he just said, I liked that game where you turned into diamonds from paper. And I looked at him and I smiled and then you know the mother was like can we take a picture you know and I do my Bowser pose but for that little kid to come up to me as Bowser and not just you know oh hey person in costume it was an amazing experience I another thing that I also liked which is something that I kind of focused on uh, a little bit more was to take well, okay. So first of all, I let me let me get this let me let me get this out right now. Asen, you took the video game room and you upped it like, oh my oh, goodness. goodness! The video game room was lit. No, I am glad we just went. We okay. I saw it a little bit on Saturday, but I am so glad we went until Sunday because from what everybody was telling me, it was crowded even for the big space well not well first of all let's take into account that there was just significantly more light there was significantly more space like it was aerated a whole lot not enough deodorant well okay unfortunately there's nothing you can do about the possibility of getting con crud you just hope you never get it but yeah the game room was fantastic um there will be Obviously, I'm pretty sure you're asking, well, yeah, this is nice for you to say, Mr. You know, Mr. Gamer, Mr. Duvall, but, you know, where in Sam Hill are those pictures and everything? Those oh. will be up and available. We just have a whole lot to go through. Because pictures? If- <laughs> pictures. Oh, the pictures. We want to make sure that we give you carefully curated content. Okay, a.k.a. Look, y'all, I had to jump right back into work as soon as I got back. <laughs> from con ah i love you guys i need sleep another thing i need some milk he needs some milk okay we're gonna <laughs> we're, we're done we're done with that meme now but that going back done. but going back meme. to asin um it was once again it was an amazing experience seeing so many different people uh, from so many different backgrounds do some really amazing things with costumes i mean that's all great and dandy, Mr. Gamer, but let's really talk about what really made your weekend. Okay. Come on, come on. This- I was trying to be nice, okay? No. I didn't want to just... Okay. Come on. So I had the pleasure of meeting the voice of Mad Moxie from Borderlands. He met his crush. One of many. <laughs> and... <laughs> I tried to do, I, I tried, I really, really tried to not be that one fanboy. To not just simply gush and, and just simply say everything that I've ever loved about you and, and everything like that. I because mean, you kind of did though. I did not. You did. I was, re- I was refined and reserved. Okay, so instead of going a hundred percent, you would probably I'll give you 80. You went 80%. So, I... Outside the press panel, you went 80%. Okay. So, for <laughs> those of you who don't know, the voice of Mad Moxie... Voice of Mad Moxie, and more specifically, um, and more and more in regards to anime, the voice of, for example, a seal Phantom High from Black Butler... Man, yeah, what? Is... Uh, her, her name is Brina Palacina. And I... When I first met her, I was really surprised... 
about how down to earth she is. And I say that because she is a celebrity. And considering what I see on TMZ and all these other uh, news outlets, my expectation is that they've heard it all. They've seen it all. You know, this is just a check to them or whatever. But talking with Brina for about me wanting to get into voice acting and then just her experiences and the fact that she happened to like the Mevo cam that I was using at the time, uh, which just happened to be a wonderful springboard. Shut your face. <laughs> uh, which happened to be a wonderful springboard into um, a conversation with her. It really showed me that she is just like every other person. She just happens to do, you know, some very famous, <laughs> very famous voices. I will say voice actors are a lot different than, say, TV actors. Because people typically don't see the actual face of the voice. Because that was my first time seeing her face. By the way, she is really pretty. She is really pretty. But anyway, let me stop being gay for a second. Um... <laughs> So that would be that 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 was the that was the highlight. I did meet uh, many other voice uh, many other voice actors. I actually went to a voice acting panel about trying to do it from home. So hey, I might be not exactly subjecting you guys to me imitating some voices, and we'll see how well that goes. Yeah. So what we're saying, what he's saying is, is that we're all going to be test guinea pigs for his uh, newfound career choices. Was I one hundred percent support? By the way, as much shit as I give you. I do appreciate the fact that you are supporting my growth in this endeavor. It's um, okay. I'm still going to be your best thing, be an asshole about it. Because you can't help yourself. I can't. I'm amazing. I'm a Gemini. Uh, anywho. <laughs> so that would that would have to be the highlight of the convention. I, 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 I love the costumes. I love how... I, I loved how something that would normally... You would think... You would have the expectation that, for example, Doctor Who, Star Trek, eventually it's going to fade out. Eventually, you know, people are going to be done with it or people are going to get sick of it. But even even with the, the, the age-old argument of who would win, Saitama or Goku, you know, you, you'd still have the, the Goku wonderful... Goku or Superman. One, uh, things like that. Um, well... We've talked about your highlights. Let's talk about some of my highlights real quick. I was Isabel. It was great. It was my first time cosplaying since C2E2 all those years ago when I was in a Lolita outfit and I got trolled by literal homestuck trolls because that was that's that was a thing back then. What, no, like way back when that was just popping. Mm, okay. So Mr. Gamer here had to put his boot in my butt gently, gently, and with lube. Lots of caring lube. But she did a, an amazing job. It was so awkward having people scream my name, scream the character name. Yeah. And I'm just literally with the bells and everything going like, oh, what is still going on? Why are you screaming? Oh, hello. Are you my mayor? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And then the, the and then that guy who was literally asking you about a petition that you had while we were getting our picture taken. I was like, please Please, please leave me alone, sir. I mean, I'm happy you find my cosplay amazing, but please leave me alone. Okay, that was that wasn't so much a highlight. That was just well, it was a funny. highlight for me. I thought it was funny. I hate you. I know you do. Oh, oh, but I think one of the best things um was that not only was I finally in a actual good cosplay, also done by Prudal Production, I also finally. Bought my mother effing elf ears, so I'm gonna be a beautiful kitty pixie that's running around these next couple of cons. Sure, why well, not? Well, I look good. Oh, and also, like, just seeing all the kids, like, this one little girl when we were getting the ears, she sat next to me and I said, Hi, you're getting your ears too? She's like, Yeah, are you joining the elf, Colvin? I'm just like, You're 10. This is adorable. I can't I just loved it so much. And her dad said, her, her dad was kind of cute, not going to lie. Okay, so <laughs> I think the, I, I think the best way that Ms. Duvall and I can wrap up ASIN is, for anyone listening to this, just take an opportunity and go. Even if it's just, even if it's just one day, you'll find, you'll find anime that you never even thought of. And go on a set, go on Saturday. Yes. Yes, please go Don't on Saturday. Don't take anything from strangers. 
Please don't. Because the raves, the raves are great. Don't take anything from strangers. Otherwise, I'm going to find you and I'm going to scold you. It was, what what surprised me was they actually had a luggage holding area in the convention this year. Like, I mean, for $3 a uh, bag, essentially, yeah. But think about it. I mean, it's like, now you can go to the convention without worrying about having a hotel room. Like, that's that was pretty nice. Not to mention the guidebook this year. I definitely liked that. That that app worked significantly better than it did last, last year. year. Yeah, it, it, it def that that was a very uh, huge sticking point last year, and they improved on that this year. And that was something I liked because I I, I don't have time for that uh, paper map. Everyone in the press department, you guys, as always, Rocket, Eric, and everybody, you guys are the best yeah. at what you do. And and seeing doing it doing it as we have been doing it for years now we're definitely seeing how difficult it is to get all of these things properly you know managed because you have who knows how well, many well this is year two for us officially so well I mean on their end of things ah uh, yes yeah on their end of things they they gotta try to you know do their best to get all these things organized and you know now they have a proper check in system with us so you know it's just a significantly smoother process that way we have the ability to tell everyone about how amazing this convention is and if you haven't taken the opportunity to please 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 please, please make sure that you attend even if even if for some reason you aren't able to actually get a badge just go to the Rosemont convention oh, center that, 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 no, we're not going to encourage that. You don't even know what I'm about to say. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm about to say. Okay. Just go and walk around and take a look. Take a look at this, what some people would consider a small subset, and just look at how expansive it is. <sighs> Look at how many look at how many people getting together. Big, tall, small, black, oh, yeah, white, we got whatever. stopped in the steak and shake by a couple who had to go to school. And they were just asking, like, oh, there's a convention because <laughs> my wife just happened to have some ears. And I'm just like eating food and like Yeah. But yes, so you know, I'm not condoning any illegal behavior. What Don't I, sneak into the con is what I'm saying. What Miss Duvall is saying is to not sneak into the con. Otherwise, what again, I, I will scold you. What I am saying is that even if you don't have the opportunity to get a badge, just to be able to go to the convention center and to see uh, Retzko from Agretzko or um, Trunks from Dragon Ball Z or... Bowser from Super Mario Odyssey. I'm just saying. Wow, that plug-in. I'm, that saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was ama- It was amazing this year. The game room was just phenomenal. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. I loved the experiences that I was able to share. Also, um, note, with the- don't ever, ever play DDR after a oh, night of raving. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> never. Don't do that. Don't do that. You'll end up you'll end up throwing up or dry heaving like I almost did. Yeah, just don't do that. If you're gonna play DDR, have some water, stretch first, and make sure that you didn't drink too heavily uh the night before because that was a mistake. That was that was just a mistake. And unfortunately, also, we don't condone underage drinking. And unfortunately, there's another video that I can't share because. Why would you even bring that up? Because I was looking at you and I thought of it, okay? Why do you think of horrible things when you look at me, Mr. You recorded it. That, what? No! You recorded it. You know what? I have no part. I, okay, I am washing my hands of you. Anyway. All right. I think we've gushed enough about how amazing the convention is. I'm not sure if we'll actually be seeing a Boondocks mobile game. If we do, it's probably going to be a free thing and perhaps you have to... Pay for diamonds or whatever to go get some special time. Best Buy isn't going to be doing the Gamer Club thing anymore. So y'all going to have to mosey back on over to the GameStop if you're going to be getting them deals. Or maybe if you... Or maybe Gamefly. Or the, the Exchange. Or... Yeah, that's... Play and all, Trade. Th- that still exists? Play and Trade does still exist. Really? Near Evergreen... Uh, near Ever... Ever... Evergreen... Um, Plaza. Yeah. Still Evergreen is. Plaza shut down. 
I say, okay, near that area. Oh! Near near that area. Oh, okay. God, I'm old. Yes, you are. And with that being said, <laughs> I'm Mr. Gamer. And I'm Kitty DeVall. And I'm signing off. <laughs>